Close your eyes and watch your breath. Try to watch it all the way in, all the way out. A part of the mind won't want to stay, it'll want to think about something else, but you've got to train it. It's like training an animal. You've got to be firm with it. Not so harsh that the animal runs away, but firm. Otherwise, they, you won't be able to live with the animal. The animal will create messes all over the house. It won't be any use at all. It's the same with the mind. If the mind is not trained, then it creates lots of messes in your life. You end up doing and saying and thinking things that are going to cause harm to yourself, harm to other people. So your, your contribution to the world is basically to train your mind, because this is what determines what you're going to do and say and think, and that's going to shape your world, and it's going to have an impact on the world of other people, too. So look at what your mind is doing right now, and you keep it here. Try to make it a game. Ask yourself, how many in breaths and out breaths can I stay with before I start wandering away? And if you make it to ten, then the next time you say, well, the next time I'm going to make it at least to twelve, or fifteen, or twenty, and work your way up. Now, if the mind does wander off, don't get frustrated with it. Just be very patient, but bring it back. And reward it. It's the same way you would reward a dog when it comes, when, when you call it to come, and you give it a reward. In the same way, when the mind comes back, you reward it with a really nice breath, a satisfying breath, something that feels good deep down inside. And you begin to notice that the way you breathe has an impact both on the mind and on the body. And you might get interested in the impact that it has on the body. That's perfectly fine, because after all, the body is going to be the place you want the mind to stay right now. So see if you can breathe with a sense of ease. This is a really useful skill to have when there are pains and illnesses in the body. You don't have to focus on the pain. You don't have to focus on the illness. Focus on which parts of the body you can make good. Like a John Mahabha was teaching to that old woman who transcribed a lot of his Dharma talks. She was 80 years old. Her eyesight was failing, but she wanted to transcribe some Dharma talks. And this is back in the days when they didn't have computers. But, she, but he told her, well, see how much goodness you can squeeze out of your body while you've still got it. There are some things you can't do, but focus on the things you can. Same way right now. There are some parts of the body you can't make comfortable, but there are others that you can. Focus on the ones that you can. Make the most of them. That way the mind will have something engaging to do here in the present moment. And you've got some more control over it. Once the mind is tamed, then it brings happiness. We see this all over the world. People who have untrained minds, they gain all kinds of status and praise and fame and wealth. And yet they can destroy themselves with those things because their minds aren't trained. They're the people whose minds are well trained, and even though they don't have much status or fame or wealth, they're still happy. They live lives that are good, upstanding lives because they've trained the mind to some extent. Well, the more you train the mind, the better. So you don't train it with whips, you train it with discernment, firmness and gentleness at the same time. And you'll find that it responds. <laughs>